everyone. It's Melinda. Today we're going to be looking at the oh-so-beautiful Laramar, which is a variety of the uh, mineral pectolite. Um, Laramar is also called Staphylia's stone. Um, and like I said, it's a rare blue variety of the silicate mineral pectolite, and it is found only in the Dominican Republic uh, in the Caribbean. Uh, its coloration varies from white, light blue, green blue, to a deep blue, um, and we're going to see, you know, a couple examples of that today. <clears throat> so, the first one I'm going to show you is my, I want to say raw piece, but it has been sliced and polished on one side. Um, and again, it is uh, pectolite. Uh, this particular region uh, has a variety called Laramar, and we're all quite familiar with that name these days. It's become quite popular. Um, it all comes from the uh, Barahona province uh, in the Dominican Republic. So let me show it to you close up. So this is the cut and polish side. Absolutely stunning. You can just see those gorgeous textures. And because it's kind of like, again, it's not raw because it's been polished, but sort of a raw-ish specimen, <laughs> you can see the, the red iron, uh, you can see more of a greenish color. Typically, this is turned into jewelry and focuses more on the blues and creams um, and the little textures within. So I really like this specimen because it's, it's a little bit different for what we would usually see for Laramar. So the Dominican Republic's Ministry of Mining Records show that Father Miguel Dominico Fortes Lauren of the Barahona par Parish requested permission on the 22nd of November in 1916 to explore and exploit, uh, exploit his mine of a certain blue rock, which we now call Laramar, um, that he himself had discovered. Um, and pectolites were not really... Uh, common or known in the Dominican Republic at that time, um, so he was really quite excited to put this mineral on the market. However, his request was denied. So the first person, uh, Father Miguel, in 1916, wanted to uh, share this beautiful mineral with the world, but <clears throat> the government denied him at that time. However, later, Miguel Mendez and a Peace Corp volunteer, Norman Ryling, rediscovered Laramar in 1974. So many years later, uh, 1974, on a beach at the foot of the Bohoruco mountain range, uh, the coastal province of Barahona. And this is the same, you know, kind of region where it was originally discovered. However, these two people, Miguel Mendez and the Peace Corps volunteer Norman uh, Ryling, were given permission to exploit this uh, mineral in 1974. So that's when it kind of hit the market um, and was being sold around the world. So let's see the raw sides. Absolutely gorgeous and so fascinating. So the red you're seeing is iron inclusions and it is the bluish greenish that we're seeing. That is the Laramar pectolite. Absolutely gorgeous. Here's a pendant, and this was purchased in Jamaica. Absolutely stunning. Mm, I really love Laramar. <laughs> it's really soft and soothing. I just love it. So Miguel Mendez, um, from the second group of discoverers, uh, took his daughter's name, Larissa, and the Spanish word for sea, mar, and formed the, the name that we know today, Laramar. Um, and it was meant to suggest the colors of the Caribbean Sea where it's found. I think it is successful. <laughs> it definitely, uh, you know, suits the mineral, the name and the mineral. 
they're all go quite nicely together. Um, <clears throat> so Miguel Mendez and Norman Ryling, uh, the few stones that they found, uh, were alluvial sediment, uh, washed into the sea by the Boharuku, um, river. Uh, so they went on an upstream search, uh, and in doing so, it revealed the situ outcrops, um, in the range, and soon the lost Chupaderos mine was formed, because like I said, they were given permission. Uh, to utilize this beautiful stone. And I have some tiny little earrings also from Jamaica. So again, Laramar is a type of pectolite. Um, or a rock composed largely of pectolite, uh, which is an acid silicate hydrate of calcium and sodium. Uh, pectolite is found in many locations, but Larimar has a unique volcanic blue coloration, uh, which is the result of copper substitutions for calcium. So it is very, very rare and unique to the uh, Caribbean uh, locations. So Miocene volcanic rocks, andesites, and bas basalts uh, erupted within the limestone of the south coast of the island. Uh, these rocks contained cavities or bugs, which were later filled with a variety of minerals, including the blue pectolite. So these pectolite cavity fillings are actually a secondary occurrence within the volcanic flows, dikes, and plugs. Uh, when these rocks erode, the pectolite fillings are carried down the slope to end up uh, in the alluvian and uh, the beach gravels. The Baharuku River carried the pectolite bearing sediments to the sea, um, and that's where they were, you know, discovered the second time. Um, and the tumbling action along the stream bed uh, provided the kind of natural polishing to the blue Larimar, and that makes them stand out in contrast to the dark gravels of uh, the stream bed. So, as you can see, and as I said previously, uh, Larimar jewelry uh, is quite popular. It's becoming very, very popular. Um, and it's offered to the public in the Dominican Republic and elsewhere in the Caribbean. Like I said, my specimens are from uh, <clears throat> my trip to Jamaica. Yeah, and so most of the jewelry is set in silver, which goes really nicely with the blue color. However, sometimes really high grade Larimar is set in gold. Um, and quality grading is according to coloration and the typical mineral, uh, mineral crystal configuration in the stone. Um, so like the beautiful pattern makes it more valuable. Um, so my earrings, you can see, uh, they're most certainly Larimar, but they don't necessarily have that stereotypical wavy look to them, like the bottom of a sea floor. Um, and they were slightly more affordable than the pendant, which does have kind of that stereotypical sunlight through the water kind of look. That reflection of the sunlight on the, the bottom of the sea, that's what it reminds me of anyways. So gorgeous. And this specimen is quite uh, translucent as well when you put a light behind it. Um, so like I said, Larimar also comes in green and red, uh, <clears throat> sometimes even brown strikes are included, and again, that's due to the presence of other minerals, um, of oxidization or, or iron inclusions, particularly when it comes to the red colorings. Um, but the more intense the blue color and the higher the contrast within the stone, um, the rarer the stone will be considered and the higher quality it will be considered. Um, so some Larimar it can be really, really quite pricey. And so I think it's important to remember that if you do have some, uh, you know, really precious Larimar pieces within your collection, the blue color is photosensitive. So it can fade with time if it's exposed to too much light or heat. Um, so just try and keep that in mind to, you know, kind of preserve that beautiful striking blue color that we love so much in our, uh, Larimar specimens. <laughs> uh, 
All right, folks, I don't have a very big collection, so that's it for today. But I, I hope you still found that interesting and um, enjoyable. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me, guys. See you next time.